Hi guys, it's Carol. How are you? Casey's here uh, with all three dogs and Toby's under my feet wanting to play ball. If I'm awake, he wants me throwing his ball. So Casey's on fetch duty. <laughs> um, tomorrow is my granddaughter's birthday, Taylor. She's going to be 14. I can't believe she's going to be 14. Um, I always have a birthday party for my grandkids at my home because their parents work, 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 and their parents like to have celebrate birthdays with them, just the four of them, the mom, dad, and the two kids. So I've always done one at my house because I want to have a celebrate birthdays with them. And I've always made a cake and everything. Well, Red's birthday was in October. That's when that new store opened that Red and I went in and filmed some, and I filmed the cookies that I thought were macaroons, but they're macarons. Uh, when we were doing that, Rhett was looking at the ice cream cakes. And I told him I couldn't afford an ice cream cake. And that was fine with him. He, we, uh, he, wanted, he decided he wanted a chocolate pie. That's another story I'll tell you about. Well, anyway, then if at our, our local grocery store, if you sign up, your family's birthdays, when your birthday comes around, they give you a $5 coupon off of a bakery item. So Casey took him and went to the bakery and got an ice cream cake. It was a round one. The quarter sheet cakes, I think, started at $39.99. The round one she got, she thinks after the $5 coupon, it was $25, but she spoils the grandkids, my her niece and nephew awful. So she got it. Okay, now it's Taylor's birthday a month later. And I asked her, what kind of cake do you want? Well, she wants an ice cream cake, but she wants me to make it. And I thought, sure, I can make an ice cream cake. <laughs> I'd never seen one out of the dairy case before Casey got the one for Rhett. I'd never actually seen one. But I thought, you know, Pinterest just got lots of recipes. I can do that. So, you need a springform pan. I didn't have one of those. I bought this one at Michael's. It's a Wilton. I had a really good coupon, like 40% off or something. I don't remember exactly. But this was like $6 after I got I used my coupons. And then you need ice cream. We like great value from Walmart cookies and cream ice cream. We think it tastes great. So we got it in a gallon thing. That's $7.12. I want to put Cool Whip on the top. That's a dollar. Let me check my notes. A dollar seven. Then we needed a big bag of Oreos. And that's five ninety eight. I want to put uh, a, some ice cream, a layer of crushed. Now, let me start over. I want to put a layer of crushed Oreos for the bottom crust. A layer of ice cream, a layer of this fudge, more ice cream, then a layer of cookies, and some more ice cream, and then the Cool Whip on top. So we got sprinkles to put on top of the Cool Whip. So for the ice cream, the fudge, the Oreos, the whipped topping, the sprinkles, and the pan was $25. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, it was. <laughs> but we can reuse the pan forever. We can use the pan forever. We'll have sprinkles left over. We'll probably have ice cream left over. We'll have a lot of ice cream. We'll may have some cookies left over. But anyway, that's what it costs to make one at home for a 10-inch round ice cream cake. <laughs> I would have been better off with a dollar cake mix, but, you know, they're growing up. Um, Red's 11 now, and Taylor's going to be 14, so, you know, and I'm seven, almost 71. I don't know how many more birthdays I'm going to have with them, so this was okay. I'm not complaining about the price, but I'm just telling you, that's what it added up to. Now, what we're going to do, you're supposed to put um, 22 of the Oreo cookies in your food processor and crush them up. I don't have a food processor, processor and I don't want one. I have a plastic a gallon Ziploc bag. I'm going to put the cookies in here, take my wooden rolling pin, and beat them to death. 
I think we can roll it out and crush them. Yeah, Casey was getting out the rolling pin. Uh, so we'll do that, and then you mix it with five tablespoons of melted butter. Just stick it all together, put it in the bottom, because it's going to be your, your crust, and then freeze this. Once it's frozen, we can do our first layer of ice cream. Now it said leave the ice cream out. I think the recipe I saw on Pinterest said it like 15 minutes to get it soft enough that you can put it in here. It's almost there. Yeah. So we're going to make that uh, cookie layer. I'll be back. Okay. You need five tablespoons of melted butter. We're economizing, so we're using blue bonnet margarine. Casey and I both worked on getting these broken up. Okay, here's the first layer. That was thicker than I expected it to be. And look, we've got all this much ice cream left. But now we're going to pour hot fudge on it here and then put another layer of ice cream. Okay, this is not going... I don't know what How we I planned. <laughs> we had that jar of hot fudge. I warmed it for about 30 seconds. Still couldn't get it out of the jar. So we warmed it for another 20 seconds. And now it's melting the ice cream. I envisioned a solid layer of fudge. Well, it's going to look like this. <laughs> but we'll put the rest of it on there. It'll be okay. AC has added the last layer and it's ready to go back in the freezer. Then we'll probably let it sit overnight. Her, to her, tomorrow's her birthday and we'll have it at lunch tomorrow. And we'll put the Cool Whip on top in the sprinkles. The sides of the pan came off really easy. This is what it looks like with the Cool Whip on top, some sprinkles and 14 for her birthday. I really am pleased with it. I think it came out great. It tasted really good. Taylor said it tasted better than the store-bought one. So we're happy with that. The one thing I should have done is put either parchment paper or something in the bottom of the uh, spring form pan because we couldn't slide the cake off the bottom of the pan. So we had to slice the pieces with the cake still on the bottom of the spring form pan. I think if I'd had parchment paper or wax paper, I could have slid it off the pan onto a plate. And that would have been better because I don't want cut marks in the bottom of my new pan. And then we also wondered if you couldn't just do this in like a 9 by 13 uh, or an 8 by 8 to cut it at, at to get it out of at one of those pans you'd have to cut the first square and it wouldn't come out pretty, but then you probably could get the others out because this was frozen solid hard. So if you want to try one and you don't want to buy a spring form pan, I bet you could do it that way and it'd be just as good. Okay, that's it for today, guys. Let me know what's going on at your house. I will see you in the next video. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.